How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome back once again for another Switch Indie Game Review. This time we're going to be taking a look at Detta, a puzzle platform which has been ported from PC by Dragus Games. The same team that brought us the fantastic Diabolic, so I'm expecting big things from Detta. If you haven't seen the review for Diabolic, it'll be linked at the end of this video. And as always, hit that like button if you enjoy this review and subscribe for future Switch Indie Game Reviews. So hitting the main menu we see our protagonist sitting on top of the game's title. He's gone for that smart casual look with an ill-fitting suit and trainer combo and from his appearance we get the impression that he's a sophisticated businessman of sorts. What with his wad of bills stashed away in his top pocket, a rough unshaven face with a mashed up looking nose and a couple of gold teeth to top off things nicely. A chiptune loop plays in the background and we've got no options to turn the music off. We can however check out the controls for the game, which look pretty standard, as with most platformers you move with your left analogue stick and jump with A. We can also push boxes, drop bombs and perform what appears to be a headbutt, but he could just be sneezing. <laughs> Hitting play from the main menu we get the level select screen, and beginning level 1 we get an introductory story, which is nice to see, but it doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Basically our hero, who is a debtor, got a bit poorly and fainted. While he was on the way to the hospital in an ambulance, he woke up in a strange place, which we can presume means he's actually brown bread. In this strange place, one of the inmates explains that people who haven't collected all the debts come to this place and that our hero is one of those people. And from this we gather our mission in the game is to collect our remaining debts. Kicking off things with the simple first level we can see our hero looking all short and ugly. Here we learn that our face is actually pretty useful as we can push blocks about with it and slam it into large metal containers to destroy them which also kind of explains the gold teeth and mashed up nose. In the time that it's taken me to push this box across the screen, I also noticed that Detta appears to have developed a bit of a nervous tick. So basically gameplay revolves around us collecting these gold coins in each stage. Once we've collected them all, the exit gate will open, which we need to make our way to to move to the next level. Each level has a time limit, and if our time runs out, we somehow die for a second time and have to restart the level. Now there's a bit of trial and error to puzzles, as our hero can only jump one block high, so you have to push blocks around to ensure you can get all the coins and then get to the exit. If at any point you make a mistake, you're able to hit the X button to quickly restart the level. In this second level, we learn our face can also be used to smash cobblestone walls, and that these mean looking spikes covered in strawberry jam can also kill us. In some levels we need to stack boxes to complete them, and when we hit level 8 we meet our first enemy, an evil looking demon with a right set of gnashes on him. Coming into contact with the demon will kill Detta, and it seems not even your face can deal with those teeth. But down and Y will drop a bomb, which doesn't really kill the demon, more drops him off the face of the earth. Continuing onward we learn that our bombs can destroy both walls and crates, there's a 2 bomb limit, and this level had me a bit stumped before I remembered that our trusty face can also smash its way through brick walls. By level 9 the music loop was starting to grate a little, but hitting level 10 we get a new chiptune track and a change of scenery as we find ourselves in some sort of warehouse, but nothing new is introduced and the game continues as before. A few levels later we learn that we can flatten demons with crates, and on level 17 we encounter our second enemy, which appears to be a zombie. But there's no difference between this enemy and the demon, and it can still be vanquished with a bomb. We also learn the mythical flying headbutt technique to take care of some pesky walls, and encounter springs which can launch us up onto hard to reach places. Upon hitting level 20 we find ourselves in some sort of Aztec temple area, complete with pits of lava and intricately carved stone blocks. We can plunge these blocks into the lava to form platforms, but gameplay generally remains the same. In this area we also encounter the final enemy the game has to offer, a green zombie which spits out green crap, but we promptly deal with him, squashing him with a stone block. Now there's not much else to say about the game from this point onward, we just continue through the remaining levels, the last of which is level 30 featuring all three of our favourite bad guys. And upon completion, we're treated to the end screen, which contains the same details as the credit screen on the main menu. And as with Diabolic, the initial story has been abandoned, and we never get to find out the fate of Detta. So what to say about my gameplay experience with Detta? Well to begin with the game isn't very difficult, some of the game's levels will require a little more problem solving than others, but for the most part they're relatively straightforward. Controls aren't too bad, apart from a few times when my jump button didn't want to respond, and I didn't encounter any real bugs, bar one that saw me trapped inside a block. 
The eShop's description of the game does take the opportunity to embellish things a little more than they deserve, sparing on about riddles, lethal traps and ruthless enemies, which is a bit of an exaggeration. But other than that, Debt is a decent little platform puzzler. Now as with all games that I review, they get a rating between 1 and 5 stars based on quality of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. I also award the Shovelware stamp of approval to the worst games I find on the eStore. And as a rating, I'd give Debt a 2 out of 5 stars. The game's pretty short, containing only 30 levels, and will probably take between 30 minutes to an hour to complete on average. Its difficulty level won't challenge most players, but if you're looking for a game to keep the kids out of the way for a little while, it's definitely a viable option. Now I gave the game 2 stars based on the price that I bought it at, which was 89p on the UK Switch eStore. And for what the game has to offer, it's really not worth much more than that. The current online listing hasn't been updated yet, and it still shows the game way overpriced at £4.99. But check the UK Switch eStore on your Switch, and it should be priced differently. The game's also available on the US eStore for $2.99 usually, but it's currently discounted to $1.99. Alternatively, you can also get the game on Steam. So that's the end of this review of Debtor. I do hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, drop the video a like and let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. And remember to subscribe to the channel where I upload videos of Switch Indie Game reviews every few days. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again for watching, and until next time, game on.